I think there's a class of global challenges that are about to uh, overcome us unless we come up with some great technologies quickly. We've got over seven billion people on this planet. Most of them don't get up in the, wa in the morning confident that they'll find potable water. Nearly half of them don't have reliable access to electricity. When you look at the environment, energy, food, health care, communications, it's all got to get better really fast, and it's only going to happen if we create some great new technologies. We are now working on a way to make point-of-use water available for a few billion people. We are similarly working on a small box that takes basically waste products and turns that into electricity. Those are two projects that DECA is excited to be working on. But categorically across the board, we need a generation of scientists, engineers, innovators, technology people that are going to keep this whole global village we have one step ahead of catastrophe. I started first with a single vision. There's plenty of schools and plenty of great teachers. We're not in the education business, and we're not in the whining and complaining about education business. The assumption that drove the creation of FIRST was you get what you celebrate in a free culture. And the reason America was slipping compared to a lot of its peers around the world, particularly in kids getting involved in and mastering science and technology, was not bad teachers or bad schools. It wasn't what we don't have. It was the fact that as a rich country, we have so many distractions that have created for kids role models that prevent them from working hard at things that matter. We have a country that celebrates almost to obsession the world of sports, the world of entertainment. They're all great things. They're fun things. But I said, if we could create using sports and entertainment an environment in which kids, particularly women, and minorities could see that the world of science and technology is every bit as fun, exciting, rewarding as bouncing a ball, and they could, through that passion, become superstars in science, technology, and innovation, they would give this country the opportunity to remain a leader in the world in establishing a quality of life and a standard of living that would continue to be a model for the world and maybe help to lead the world to a better place where we can all share in the wealth instead of all fighting. So to me, the, the vision of FIRST was capture the hearts and minds of kids in such a way that they are willing to work as hard at developing this muscle as the ones hanging off their arms and become the next generation of superstars of innovation. Well, the good news now is after 20 years of running FIRST, it's become painfully clear that the people that get to these kids when they're young, the companies that have been supporting the same high school now for four, five, six years, that's more than a whole generation of high school, end up bonding with the, with the students, with the teachers, with the community. Not only do these kids typically stay in school far more than their peers do because of FIRST, they go on to college and far more of them study science and engineering. And when they come out, you know where they want to go? To the companies that adopted them when they were kids. So we're creating a pipeline for the major companies and for the next big company that looks out there and says, where am I going to get my next generation of great engineers and scientists? Shame on them if it's not obvious to them. If they haven't been investing in FIRST, if they haven't been part of FIRST, they probably won't get the pick of the litter. The 3,500 corporate sponsors that we have now are picking these kids up. They're creating their own future workforce, their own future superstars, and it's the way it ought to be. You invest long term in these kids, and these kids will help you build and keep great companies.